Have you ever stepped outside on a cold morning, tried using your phone, and suddenly the battery was like, nope, I'm tired. Well, if that tiny phone battery struggles in the cold, what do you think happens to an entire electric car? That's exactly what we're diving into today. And trust me, the truth might surprise you. Have you ever noticed your EV's predicted range taking a nosedive the moment the temperature drops? You charge up, you check the dash, and suddenly that glorious 300 miles has shrunk down to maybe 250 or even less. It can feel like your car is suddenly on a secret diet, only eating up energy faster than ever before. It's a super common and frankly a bit frustrating reality for EV owners worldwide. We hear it all the time, electric cars perform less well in cold weather, but what does less well actually mean and how much are we talking about? More importantly, is there anything you can actually do about it besides move to Florida? We're going to break down the cold, hard facts about why your EV seems to go on a winter vacation from its normal performance, and I'm going to share some easy, game-changing tips that will help you keep as much of that precious range as possible, even when Jack Frost is nipping at your charger port. The first thing to understand is that your EV isn't singled out for this cold weather performance dip. The core culprit here is the lithium ion battery. Think of it this way, your EV's battery is a powerhouse of tiny, tiny chemical reactions. These reactions are what push the charge out to spin your wheels. But here's the kicker, chemical reactions are naturally slower when they're cold. It's like trying to run a 100 meter dash after waking up in the morning. You need to warm up first. In simple terms, inside the battery, lithium ions need to move smoothly from one side, the anode, to the other, the cathode, to create electricity. When it's cold outside, the electrolyte fluid they move through becomes thicker, a bit like molasses. This makes it harder and slower for the ions to move. This sluggishness means the battery can't release energy as efficiently or as quickly as it can on a warm, sunny day. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, my phone has a lithium battery and it seems fine. And you're right, to a point. This cold weather effect is true for all lithium batteries. It's the same reason your smartphone, laptop, or camera battery might seem to drain faster when you're out on the ski slope. It's even true for the regular 12 volt lead acid batteries in a traditional petrol or diesel car. That's why it sometimes takes an extra crank or two to get the engine going on a sub-zero morning. But here's the difference. You might not notice your iPhone losing an extra 10% battery life on a cold day, or that tiny delay in your petrol car starting. But when your EV, which relies entirely on its battery, suddenly loses between 10 and 30% of its normal driving range, well, that's noticeable. That's a huge chunk of your commute, your road trip, or your ability to get to your next charger. That significant figure, the 10 to 30% range drop, comes from companies that track EV performance. And here's the good news we should always remember. This performance drop isn't permanent. Once the cold snap passes, your battery performance snaps right back to normal. But for now, let's look at the three main areas where the cold hits us hardest. So we've established that your range takes a hit, but the cold doesn't stop there. It actually creates a triple threat for your EV. It messes with your driving range, it slows down your charging speed, and it severely impacts the effectiveness of your beloved regenerative braking system. Wait, regenerative braking? That smooth slowing down that puts energy back into the battery? Yep, that takes a hit too. This might sound like a lot of bad news, but remember our goal here is simple. Knowledge is power, literally. Once we understand why these things are happening, we can easily fight back. Let's tackle charging speed first. Do electric cars charge slower in the winter? The short answer is a resounding yes, especially when you first plug in. Remember how the battery chemistry is slowed down by the cold? Well, that sluggishness doesn't just affect how energy comes out of the battery to drive the car. It also affects how quickly energy can be pushed back in when you're charging. Imagine trying to pour thick honey into a bottle with a tiny opening. It takes forever. A cold battery is a lot like that. To protect the battery and ensure a long life, the car's battery management system, BMS, will deliberately limit the charging speed when the battery is too cold. The BMS is smart, and it knows that trying to force a lot of current into a freezing battery can actually cause permanent damage, leading to what's called lithium plating. We definitely don't want that. However, there's a big silver lining here. These batteries have an ideal operating temperature window. Most modern EVs know this, and they have built-in systems to warm up the battery while driving or before charging. This is why you often see faster charging speeds once the battery has been running for a while or has been deliberately warmed up. The key takeaway? Charging without warming up the battery first will be slower than normal, but once that battery is up to temperature, it should charge just as quickly as it does in warmer weather, provided the charger itself is also running optimally. This brings us right to our next most important point. 
Now for the part that can be a real surprise for new EV drivers, regenerative braking. Regen is one of the coolest things about an EV. When you lift your foot off the accelerator, the car's motors reverse their job and act like generators, using the wheel's momentum to push energy back into the battery. It slows you down smoothly and you literally get free miles back. But wait, where does that energy go? right back into the battery. Since regenerative braking is just another way of shoving energy back into the battery, it relies on that same internal battery chemistry we talked about. And just like with fast charging, the car's computer will severely limit how much energy it allows back in if the battery is too cold to safely accept it. So what does this feel like when you're driving? Drive your EV on a cold morning without letting it warm up and you'll notice that when you lift the accelerator, the car just coasts. It doesn't slow down with that satisfying, strong region effect you're used to. This can be genuinely alarming if you rely on one pedal driving, where you barely use the brake pedal. The good news, and this is crucial, is that your friction brakes, your regular discs, calipers, and pads work exactly as they always have. When you press the brake pedal, the car will first try to use as much regen as it can, and then blend in the physical brakes. If regen is limited, it just leans harder on the friction brakes. You'll stop safely, but you'll miss out on recovering that that valuable energy. Just like with charging, once the car and its battery pack have warmed up from driving, the regenerative braking strength will return to normal. We've seen the problem. Cold slows down your range, slows down your charging, and slows down your regen. So what's the silver bullet? What is the one thing every EV owner needs to make a mandatory part of their winter routine? The answer is one simple yet powerful word. Preconditioning. If you take only one tip from this entire video, this is it. You should absolutely, without question, precondition your electric car in winter. Preconditioning is like giving your car a big, warm hug before it has to face the cold world. It's literally heating up the battery and the cabin before you even put it in drive. Preconditioning works in two main ways, both of which are massive energy savers for you. The first is charging efficiency. If you're heading to a public fast charger, preconditioning your EV while on the way ensures that the battery will be at its optimum temperature when you plug in. Remember that slow honey pouring effect? Preconditioning prevents that. Your car can start charging at its fastest possible rate immediately, saving you precious minutes out in the cold. It's the difference between a 40 minute charge stop and a 25 minute one. Who wouldn't want that? The second benefit of preconditioning is getting maximum starting range. This is the big one, and it's all about how you start your day. When you preheat your car while it is still plugged into your home charger, you are warming up the battery and the cabin using electricity pulled directly from the wall, not from your car's battery. Think about it. Heating a a car cabin and a massive battery pack from freezing cold to their ideal temperature takes a huge amount of energy. If you wait until you've unplugged and started driving, the car has to steal that energy directly from your driving battery, the miles you need for your commute. By preconditioning while plugged in, you bring the cabin up to a comfortable temperature and get the battery operating efficiently, all for free without stealing a single mile of range. From the moment you unplug and drive off, your EV is operating as efficiently as possible, instead of working hard and inefficiently to warm everything up on the move. It's the ultimate winter hack. Okay, so how do you do this magic trick? You might be scared you don't know how to precondition your EV, but relax, it's actually really simple, although it varies slightly between different car brands. Generally speaking, if you use the car's built-in navigation system to find a public fast charge station, the car is smart enough to handle the rest. Once you are around 30 to 45 minutes away from the charger, the car will automatically start heating or cooling the battery pack to reach that ideal temperature when you arrive. It's fantastic hands-off technology. This is why, for example, a company like Tesla suggests that if a supercharger is less than 30 to 45 minutes away, Model 3 drivers should consider preconditioning the battery before driving. It's essentially telling you, give the car a head start. What if you use a smartphone app like Waze or Google Maps to navigate? No problem. It's usually possible to manually precondition your EV's battery by diving into the car settings menu on the main screen. You'll want to do this if you're using third-party apps to find your charger. For warming up the cabin and the battery before your morning commute, virtually every modern EV has a smartphone app. You can simply open the app 15 minutes before you plan to leave, tap the precondition or preheat button, and let the car do its work while it's still plugged in. This is the most crucial step for maximizing your daily range in winter. So we've talked a lot about heating the car and the battery, but where does all that heat come from? A heat pump is an amazing piece of engineering that helps your EV manage temperature far more efficiently than a simple electric heater. Think of a heat pump like a tiny refrigerator running in reverse. 
The standard electric heater in an EV is essentially a giant toaster. It uses pure electricity to generate heat. That's very effective, but it sucks a lot of power from your battery, directly reducing your range. In an EV's case, this mostly means taking existing warmth, maybe the residual heat from the battery pack as it operates, or even the subtle heat from the outside air, and using it to efficiently heat the cabin. It essentially recycles heat that is already present. This is why non-electric cars never bothered with heat pumps. Their engine creates a massive amount of waste heat, which they just pipe into the cabin for free warmth. EVs don't have that waste heat, so they need a smart solution. The heat pump is that solution. Okay, so we've spent a lot of time focusing on EVs, but is all this range loss, slow charging, and preconditioning hassle just an electric car problem? Or does cold weather affect all vehicles? Having an EV doesn't mean that the freezing temperatures only affect you. We've already mentioned the 12 volt battery issues in traditional cars, but let's dive a little deeper to realize that petrol and diesel engines also work less efficiently when cold. When an engine is cold, the oil is thicker, which means the engine has to work harder just to move its parts. The fuel mixture also has to be richer to keep the engine running smoothly, which means you're getting worse fuel economy. Just like your EV range dips, your miles per gallon or liters per 100 kilometers also dips in the winter. We talked about how chemical reactions slow down when cold. Well, for the lead acid battery in a petrol or diesel car, that reduction is severe. Beyond the engine and the battery, all cars tend to work harder in cold weather because of the driver. You've cranked up the interior heating to full blast, and you might even be using the air conditioning to stop the windows from steaming up. All of these things, the AC compressor, the fan, the lights, the wipers, the seat heaters, draw power. And that power has to come from somewhere, whether it's draining your battery or forcing your engine to burn more fuel to generate more electricity. So, while the effects on an EV are more noticeable, a dramatic range drop is hard to ignore, the underlying truth is that all vehicles are inherently less efficient and less performant when the temperature drops. You're not alone! I want to hear from you! Tell us in the comments if you have ever noticed your phone losing battery while outside in the cold. It's a great way for all of us to share our experiences and realize that lithium batteries are just a little bit sensitive. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like this video. It really helps the channel grow. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next video.